Hello everyone and welcome back once again. This is your EVS teacher here and this time I am here with the new chapter of grade 5th NCRT EVS that is every drop counts. And yes students, your, this chapter will be in two parts and this one is the first part of your chapter number 6. Students, your, this chapter has a lot of information and important facts and news about the water bodies like ponds, lakes, oceans, rivers, etc. Students, further, your this chapter means every drop counts tells about the history of the water bodies and the value of water in different areas according to the availability of water over there. Students, moreover, this chapter also tells about different ways of getting water and their sources from where we obtain them and in addition to how we obtain them and students your this chapter also discusses the various problems that people face around the country further it also discusses many ways that tells how to solve the problem of the water crisis and students at the last this chapter will also tells you about the various stories of old times that help the students better understand the value and importance of the water in one's life. So let's start students your this chapter starts with a story we can say or a description long long ago. Students as you can see here picture is being depicted here and students this is a picture of Ghatsisar. So first let's read this story. This is a picture of Ghatsi Sar. Sar means a lake. King Ghatsi of Jaisalmer got it made 650 years ago with the help of the people. All round the lake there are ghats with steps leading to the water, decorated verandas, large halls, rooms and much more. People came here to celebrate festivals and for, and for programs of music and dance. Children came to study in the school on the ghat. The tala belonged to everyone and everyone took care to keep it clean. Students, as I said, this is the image that you basically observe here in this image. It's a picture of ghat se sar. Students, the word sar means a lake and this ghat that you basically observe here in this image is made by King Ghatsi of Jaisalmer around 650 years ago with the help of the surrounding peoples and students all around this lake there are many ghats with steps that leads towards the water and students there are also many decorative verandas large halls rooms and many more things and students people usually came to here at this place to celebrate festivals and for programs of music and dance and even children also came to here to study in the school on the ghats of this lake and students this tala or lake is belong to everyone so every people took care to keep it clean Red water collected in this lake spread over many miles. It was made in such a way that when the lake was full, the extra water flowed into another lake at a lower level. When that too filled up, then the extra water flowed into the next lake. This way, all nine lakes filled up. This rain water could be used throughout the year. Today, Ghatsisar is no more in use. Many new buildings and colonies have come up in between those nine lakes. Now, the water doesn't get collected in these lake lakes. Rainwater just flow away and is wasted. And streams during rainy season, rainwater collected in this lake and thus spread over many miles. And streams. This lake was made in such a way that when the lake was full during rainy season, then the extra water of the lake flowed into the another lake at a lower level. 
okay students so there wasn't caused any flooding over there now students when the second lake too filled up with water then the extra water flowed into the next lake and that's how there were overall nine lakes that were filled up by rain water during rainy season and the students then the people of ghatsisar used this rain water throughout the year but students now today this ghatsisar is no more in use because there were many buildings and colonies have come up in between those nine lakes and so now the water doesn't get collected in these lakes and due to this during rainy season rain water just flows away and due to this during rainy season rain water just flows away and is wasted so students this is the story or we can say the description of the ghatsisa lake that you see over here in this image now students as you can see here the heading through the eyes of al biruni students this man over here in this image is al biruni and it was a traveler who came to india from the country named uzbekistan now students let's read about him more than a thousand years ago a traveler came to india his name was al biruni the place that he came from is now called uzbekistan al biruni carefully observed and noticed down the details of all that he saw he wrote especially about those things that he found very different from his own country here's a part of what he wrote about the ponds of that time the people here are very skilled at making ponds my countrymen would be surprised to see them they pile up huge rocks and join with iron woods to build up chabutras raised platforms all around the lakes between these there are rows of long staircases going up and down the steps for going up and coming down are separate so there is less crowding today we study history we can learn a lot of those days from the writings of al biruni the system came out in 1973 1000 years after his birth students as i said that al biruni was a traveler who came to india around 1000 years ago from a place that we now called as uzbekistan and students during his journey al biruni carefully observed each and everything in india and he noted down the details of all that he saw in india so students he especially wrote about those things that he found very different from his own country so in this sky blue bracket that you see over here in this image are the words that he wrote about the ponds of india during his journey students when al biruni observed the ponds of india then he wrote that the people here in india are very skilled at making ponds and students he said that the people of his country would be surprised to see the ponds of india students he further wrote that the indian people piled up huge rocks and joined them with iron rods to build chabutras or you can say a raised platforms all around the lakes further he wrote that between these chabutras there were a long staircases going up and down and there were separate entrance and exit towards the lake and students today when you study history you can learn a lot about those days from the writings of al biruni and students the stamp that you see here this one came out in 1973 1000 years ago after his birth now students here is an activity that you have to do so listen here carefully what you have to do in this activity 
Look at the area around your school. Are there any fields, farms, pakka roads, drains, etc.? Is the area sloping, rocky or flat? Think what will happen here when it rains. Where will the rainwater go? Into the drains, pipes or pits? Is some water also getting soaked into the soil? So student, this you need to observe at your this activity and then you have to answer here that the area around your school is slopey, rocky or flat or what will happen in the area around your school when it rains there and where will the rainwater go during the rainy season into the drains, pipes or pits and lastly you have to answer here that is some water also getting soaked into the soil to around the area of your school students here i am giving you the answer as just a suggestion you can modify this answer by writing in your own words so here is the answer yes there are fields farms pakka roads drains etc in the area around my school and also the area is flat around my school and usually during the rainy days when it rains the rain water goes into the drains and also some water gets absorbed by the soil now students let's discuss the chapter further as you can see here the heading drop by drop besides jaisalmer many places in rajasthan get very little rainfall here it rains for only a few days in the entire year and sometimes not even that much the rivers here do not have water all around the year and yet most of the villages in these areas didn't have a shortage of water people knew that every drop of water was precious lakes and johars were made to collect water water has everyone's need one and all came together in this work be it is a businessman or a laborer some water from the lakes soaked into the ground and reached the wells and bawdies means step well the soil of the area also became wet and fertile now students as we all know that Rajasthan one amongst the most driest places of India so here in Rajasthan beside Jaisalmer there are many places that get very little rainfall and students you will amazed to know that here in some places of Rajasthan rain for only a few days in the entire year and so the rivers here don't have waters all around the air due to very less rainfall but students most of the villages in these areas didn't have a shortage of water do you know why because here people knew that every drop of water was precious and they also knew that water was everyone's need so here every people whether they are businessman or a laborer came together in order to build lakes and johars where they used to collect water and streams from the lakes the water soaked into the ground and reached the wells and bawdies means step wells and streams also due to these lakes and johars the soil of the surrounding area also became wet and fertile and streams that's how the people of rajasthan come out of lack of water now students here is a question that that every house had a system to collect the rain water look at the picture below how do you think the rain water that falls on the roof will reach the underground tank and then you have to draw the path also students as i said in the earlier slide that many places of rajasthan get a very little amount of water so in order to come out the shortage of water every house of rajasthan 
had a system to collect the rainwater as you can see here in this image now students here you have to answer that how do you think the rainwater that falls on the roof during the rainy season will reach underground the tank so students in this question you have to write down here that the water collected on the roof comes down in the pipes and gets stored in the tank below as you can see here students that's how you have to draw the path of the water from the roofs till the tank below the ground now students here is a question that have you ever seen a step well look at the picture can you imagine by looking at the picture that the steps go down several stories deep instead of drawing water from the well the people could go down the steps and reach the water that is why they are called step wells students the image that you see here in this picture is called a step well and as you can see here in this picture the steps go down several stories deep so students instead of drawing the water up from the well the people used to go down the steps and reach the water during past time and that's why they are called step wells now students can you answer me that why people used to construct these step wells well students long ago many people used to make their long journeys with their caravans of animals and goods so during that time people felt it was a good thing to give water to such thirsty travelers that's why they built many such beautiful step wells as you can see here in this image now students here is another question that have you ever faced a shortage of water in your area if yes then what was the reason for it talk to your grandmother or any elderly person find out when they were of your age students it is very obvious so here you have to write down that yes we do face shortage of water in our area now students you have to discuss this question with your grandmother or mother and you have to ask them that what was the reason for the shortage of water during their time now the next question is from where did they get water from the house has there been a change now now students after discussing the question number 3 with your grandmother or with your mother you have to question them that from where did they get water for the house and has there been a change now students here i am already given the answer as per your convenience that they usually get water from rivers ponds wells hand pumps and yes now it has changed they get water from some suppliers students this answer is just for a suggestion you can completely change or modify it by after discussing with your grandmother or any other elderly person of your family now students the next question is what kind of water arrangements were made for travelers for example piao mashak means leather bag or any other now what do people do about water when they travel students can you identify this image yes this is the leather bag or we can say mashak that people used to carry with them as a water bottle as like the water bottle that we carry for water at present time so you have to answer here that now people who travel they carry their own water bottles or purchase the water bottles which is neatly packed from the nearby shops now students the next topic is custom related to water even today people get water from very old lakes dharas step wells and nalas 
many customs and festivals are related to water at some places whenever lakes get filled up with rain water the people gather around the lakes to celebrate see the bride of uttarakhand in this picture after getting married she has come to the new village she bows to the spring or the pond in cities one can see an interesting form of this custom the new bride worship the tap in her home can you imagine life without water students as you all know that even today people usually get water from very old lakes dharas step wells and nalas and students our many customs festivals rituals are related to water like makar sankranti students in the same way some places like in rajasthan whenever their lakes get filled up with rain water the people of rajasthan gather around the lake in order to celebrate it and students as you all know that in uttarakhand after getting the married the newly bride in the village bows to the spring or the pond to worship in the same ways in cities bride worships the tap in her home now students here is a question that can we even imagine life without water students as we all know that water is the most precious thing for the world to survive and it plays a very crucial role in our lives without water we cannot even live for few days and students as you all know that 70% of our body is made up of water so if there is no water then we will crumble like dust and students even without water no plants will be able to grow so we can say that we cannot imagine our life without water now students here is a question that do you have some special pots for water at your place if yes then you have to write down yes we have some special pots for water at my place like this one over here in this image now students you have to observe in these two images that there is a pot that is made up of copper this one here that we also known as gagar in our common language and in the other hand in the next picture other pot that you see here in yellow color is basically made up of brass and students we call this pot in our common language bantha and students do you observe this kind of stone carvings around the areas of the dharas and the nalas at your village or any kind of beautiful buildings near the place of the water in your village if yes then you have to write down here yes and you also have to write down the name of the place where you observe this kind of beautiful building near the place of water now students here are some more questions to discuss the first one is is there a lake well a step well near your house or school visit it find out more about it how old is it who got it built students here in this question you have to answer that is there any kind of lake well or step well near your house or school if yes then how old it is and who got it built students for the answer of this question you have to discuss this question with your mother or with your grandmother then you have to write down your answer here yes there is a lake near my house my grandmother says it is more than 100 years old students this answer is just a suggestion you can completely change it after discussing with your grandmother grandfather or any other elderly person of your house next what kind of buildings are around it means near the lake well or step well students here in this question also you have to write down the answer of this question after discussing with your grandmother or grandparents at your homes 
that what kind of buildings are basically built there around the lake well or step well if there are newly built buildings then you have to write down here newly built buildings if there aren't any kind of buildings then you have to just write down no here now students the next question is is the water clean is it clean regularly so students if the water clean then you have to write down yes if no then you have to write down here no no the water is not clean in the lake i have never seen a lake being clean regularly question number 4 who all use the water now students here you have to answer that who all use the water of the lake or the ponds or the dharas nalas of your village so students it is obvious that all the people of your village use the water for cleaning purposes now the next one is there any festival celebrated at this place now students for the answer of this question you have to just discuss this question with your grandparents or the elderly persons of your house next is there any water today or is it dry now students for the answer of this question also you have to discuss this question with your parents that is there any water today or is it dry if yes then you have to write down yes there is little water in the lakes or in johars nalas or dharas in your village if no then you have to just write down no here now students with this question here the first part of your chapter number six is completed here now i will be come back soon with the second part of this chapter till then stay home stay safe and stay healthy